Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, my top 10 shows of 2019. Well here it is, New Year's Eve, December 31st, and I hope your holiday and Christmas season has been absolutely fantastic up until now. That could all change with this show. Guys, over the past year, I've managed to put out 105 shows. That is a lot of programs to put out in one year, doing two each week, and I hope that you've enjoyed them all. I know that you can't please everybody, and not everyone's going to like every show, but which ones are my favorite and why? And that's what we're going to focus on today. So sit back as I give you Kenny's favorite shows of 2019. Number, Number 10. 10! On January 15th of this year, I brought you this my ABS frame clamp, or my version of it. And guys, why would this be on the list as my favorites? Two reasons, really. One, because it joined up beautifully and made almost a series between the show the week before demonstrating how to make these jig knobs, but then on top of that, it sort of blended right into making this frame clamp. And I have to say that the project performs just as well as my store-bought one. And the price difference between the two is astronomical. So sometimes I get guys comment on the show when I'm using my other store-bought stuff saying, yeah, that's a nice thing, but it's so expensive. Here is your inexpensive solution to that frame clamp. And honestly, this thing thing was built for dirt cheap and it works spectacularly. Is that even a word? <laughs> so at number 10, the ABS frame clamp. Number, number nine. nine. Well, January 29th was the day that I brought you part one of a three part series on wood burning. And honestly, guys, this is my favorite because it's something different from what I normally do on the show. It gave me a chance to play around with my wood burner and sort of bring out the artistic guy in me and do this wood burning. And honestly, this project was just a load of fun. I loved every minute of it, getting to use the different tips on the wood burner, different heat settings, making that setup and the practice board to show the different heats and that sort of thing. I loved bringing the show to you guys as that three-part series, and I love to see all your comments and the questions, and uh, it's the whole project was just a great experience. And on top of that, it took first place at the local fair. So. At number nine, the wood burning tutorial. Number eight. Well, the date was February 8th, 2019, and I brought you this project, the Rubo Book Holder. Guys, if you've watched this show at all, you know that I'm a big fan of my power tools. The majority of the projects here on the show are made with power tools, and sometimes I step away and do the hand, uh, the hand work. And this was an exercise in chisel use that was beyond explanation as far as how fun and how challenging it was. It was challenging for one reason, to be able to get those 45s of the hinge done at proper angles, but it was a satisfying project because of how at the end it worked out. You get that cracking as it's opening up and all of a sudden, boom, you've got a book holder. Guys, honestly, the hand done work is so much fun and this is my favorite because of that. I loved working the chisels. I loved, you know, being able to split that with the bandsaw and see that my handwork had worked out. Just a wonderful project, guys. Great looking. What more can I say about it? I mean, check it out. 
Num number seven. seven. Well, if there's one thing I like bringing to you guys here on the show, it's jigs and fixtures. And I've made quite a few over the years. But on April 12th of this year, I brought you this circle cutting jig for your router. And while I brought you a couple versions of the circle cutting jig, this one here rides out on number top, or number one rather, as being my favorite of those jigs. I'm not comparing it to the bandsaw one because that one's spectacular in its own right. I'm just referring to the handheld router. Guys, the platform on this with the plywood gives you a very stable surface to work with. It holds the router extremely uh, stable on top of your work. There's no teetering, there's no rocking, there's there, there's nothing that makes you feel uneasy. Um, I would prefer it with a plunge base, to be honest. That would be a little better, but the fixed base works just fine. You just have to drill your entry hole or your starter hole for your bit. So, at number seven, one of my favorite circle cutting jigs, it's this one for your router. Number six. six. Well, number six is one of those, you know what? It's a tool modification. And I'm not talking about the modification that I did to the dust collection on my jointer. I'm talking about this. And guys, that is the ability to change the height of my drill press table from the front. This was an absolutely spectacular move on my part, if I do say so myself. And it's made the drill press so much nicer to adjust. No more reaching at the back for that crank. And of course, with the auxiliary drill press table on the top, that really whacks at your knuckles when you're reaching back there. So having those controls right out in front is just a godsend. It is absolutely spectacular. It's the best thing I've ever done to a tool. And if I ever get another drill press, one of the first things I'm doing is putting new gears in it like this and changing it to a front mount adjustment. Guys, if you haven't already considered this for your drill press, think about it. Think about it. It is spectacular. Check out the show and see how you can modify yours to do the same thing. So, at number six, the drill press modification. Number five. Well, Friday, October 4th brought us number five. And number five is the simple lidded box. Why is this on the list? Because the method of it is spectacular. Guys, this method of making a utility box is one of the slickest methods I have ever used. One of the viewers asked if it could be done with a dado. Of course it could be done with a dado. There's no difference between using a dado blade against the fence or using a quarter inch router bit against the fence. The geometry works the same. So if you haven't checked out this show already, guys, you're really denying yourself of a spectacular way to make a utility box like this. It's just gorgeous. It's honestly impressive and so easy. So that's what brings it here at number five with the simple utility box. Ooh, number four. Well, on October 8th on Alternative Tuesdays, I demonstrated this, our zombie dogs. And guys, honestly, this project was a lot of fun. And it makes the list here at number four basically for one reason. I honestly believe that the reason I had as much fun as what I did is because my wife was in the shop with me. My wife and I have been together for 30 years. We've had a lot of fun together and we still have fun together to this day. So 
having her in the shop, although woodworking isn't really her gig, the crafty stuff is her gig and she was more than willing to come out and have some fun in the shop for the day and honestly, it was spectacular. A lot of fun, I had a great day and she did too. So that's what makes this hit the list. It's not the project, it was the company I had while making it. At number four, the zombie dogs with Mrs. Kenny Earrings. No, no, no. Number three. Well, on October 25th, number three was brought to your attention, and it was our menu board. This was a complete pain in the butt project. Uh, it took what seemed like forever. It, it took days and days and days to make this, and most of it was because the painting of the chalk with the different uh, coats of paint the setup of that, the making the frame, putting on the finish, putting it together, the vinyl, cutting the vinyl, attaching the vinyl, making sure everything lined up. Total pain in the butt. 100% pain in the butt, but 100% ton of fun. If you look beyond the pain in the butt and look at the different processes that we used here, between the table saw, getting the frame to fit together, the French cleat to hang it, something completely different with cutting some vinyl on the front. There's a lot of different processes. What makes this on the list of my favorite shows of 2019 is a combination of both all the different processes and the fact that I overcame that pain in the butt thing and had fun with it, and as well, its usefulness. This thing hangs in our kitchen and my wife just loves it. Writes what the meal is for those days on the board. She never has to listen to husband come home and say, hey, what's for dinner? Because all I gotta do is peek in the kitchen and look at the board. It's a great project that was a lot of fun to do. And honestly, I love the way it looks. And it's just a fun thing to have in your kitchen to, you know, write your menu for the week on. So. Menu board. It made the list. Number, Number two. two. Number two was a show that was aired on November the 12th. And November the 12th brought us glass etching. Guys, th this project was something completely different. And it really gave me the opportunity to use my power carver in a different way that I've never experienced before. It doesn't always have to be about wood. And this project where I etch the glass and put on the jar Pops Candy, honestly, it was a blast. I've never done it. That was my first time doing it. I gave you my experience uh, or, or my tips as I went with light pressure and that sort of thing, how to fill it in, what burrs to use. It doesn't matter. It was a great project that was a lot of fun. It looks so professional. And it's nice to have a jar to put my candy in. <laughs> so guys, at number two, glass etching with the power carver. No, no, no. Number one. So here we are at number one and what would be my favorite show of 2019 or my favorite project. The shop made sliding bevel. Guys, there is something so satisfying about making your own tools. Using that aluminum bar and polishing it up like that and, and Making a tool that is so useful in the shop, there's a sense of pride. There's a sense of, hey, look what I made. And there's also a sense of every time you use it, you're thinking, man, this thing's awesome. I know that sounds corny, but until you make your own tools and actually use them in the shop and find them so useful, I guess you just can't understand what I'm saying, but I'm sure there are a lot of you out there that understand 100% what I'm saying, and I really hope that you guys are gonna try this project because, man, picture it. This thing gets handed down through the generations. 
all down the line, long after you're gone. Brand it with your name, wood burn your name in it. Five generations, six generations down the road, you've got your great, 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 great grandkid using a sliding bevel that was made however many years ago by his great, 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 great grandfather. Are you kidding me? What's more satisfying than that? At number one, the shop made sliding bevel. And there you have it. My top 10 list of my favorite shows of 2019. Guys, we have a lot of fun on this show, honestly. Uh, and when I say ye we, I'm referring to you and me. Uh, I'm a one-man band out here. I do the filming, I do the projects, I do the editing, the posting, I answer all your comments. I am the guy. This is, there's no other crew here but me. So when I hear your comments and, and your appreciative uh, thanks, I guess, it's very satisfying to me and it makes all of that work so worthwhile. If you haven't already, guys, please like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. Share the content if you liked it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. Being that this is the end of 2019, New Year's Eve, I want to wish all of you a very happy New Year. Please have a safe celebration. And I honestly hope you're going to join me in 2020 when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays. Happy New Year, guys.